we wanted it to sound like the Sex Pistols, the Clash, because that's what we loved. Power, the raw, the ah! And when it wasn't, I was absolutely heartbroken. I wasn't enamoured <laughs> uh, by the mixes. Martin Anna was very strange. It took two days to mix it, and we weren't allowed there when it was being mixed, so the first time we heard it was when it was finished. I think his attitude was, these idiots that have managed to write this superb album by mistake don't know what they're doing, so I'll get them out from under my feet and then I can do what I want without their stupid comments. It was a completely different, same songs, but a completely different feel. And if anything, I'd say that it was too mature for me. We'd done all these gigs and heard the power that we produced live on stage. We were a great band because we were very, very, very tight as yeah, a unit. Joy Vision Live had a whacking, great, door-shaking, powerful sound. The sound of the studios was a real 1970s studio, and the walls were covered in thick carpet, shag pile carpet, and the floor was, and, and there was no reflective surfaces, so it was a completely dead studio. So it sounded like you were recording in a vacuum with no ambience at all. Martin was a difficult character, but he gave us the gift of longevity. The album is a thoughtful, contemplative, melancholic compared to how Joy Division were alive. So much more evocative. It really was a fantastic gift that he, he gave us at, at that point. The idea was that was Martin was going to add electronic ambience after, which he did do. You could do that now with the technology we have now, but in those days, the technology wasn't really up to it, so he ended up with this kind of thin, watery reverb and put on this sound that was made in a vacuum, which I guess gave it an idiosyncratic sound. At that point, I might have been writing, you know, decent, mature music, but I'm afraid I wasn't a decent, mature, man uh, in any way, shape or form. I was a punk, I was a screaming, angry, sweaty, aggressive punk, and I wanted our LP to be like that. There was a plus side to it, but a negative side to it. Martin managed to capture the eccentricity of our sound and add some of his own eccentricities. He didn't capture the power. We were lucky. We were lucky that what we did was fantastic. So maybe five songs that didn't actually make Unknown Pleasures. So, you know, Unknown Pleasures could have ended up being <laughs> if we hadn't if we hadn't picked the right songs. You know, in a funny way, looking back now, I'm so delighted that me and Barney didn't get our own way because we would have bloody ruined probably one of the greatest albums of the 20th century. Yeah.